Australians love their meat, but few would stop to consider how much antibiotics is used in what they're eating. The use of antibiotics in food supplies worries ethical butcher Laura Dalrymple. We source whole animals from regeneratively managed farms, mostly in New South Wales. Laura says a big selling point for her customers is the lack of antibiotics used in the meat sold in her shop. It's completely antibiotic free. Uh, the farms from which we source are managing uh, their livestock with as few interventions as possible. According to Australia's regulator, antibiotics are used on livestock to treat infection and sometimes to promote growth. It's this use on healthy animals which is of most concern because it could give rise to resistant bacteria. Superbugs are a problem that's getting worse globally. In Australia we're still better off than most of the rest of the world, but if we want to stay that way, we've got to decrease antibiotic use both in people and in animals. The World Health Organisation has listed antibiotic or antimicrobial resistance as one of the top ten global health threats facing humanity. Consequences of too many superbugs or more and more superbugs coming to people from whatever direction means we have more deaths and more suffering. And if those antibiotics, if those are reduced in their, in their efficacy, then we will end up with all sorts of new and more problematic um, d animal diseases. New research provided to 7.30 has some scientists worried about the presence of antibiotic resistant bacteria in Australia's meat supplies. Researchers at the University of Canberra were commissioned by Animals Australia to test meat samples from Australian supermarkets. In total we collected 404 meat samples, so 244 chicken, and 160 pork samples. The meat was bought across New South Wales and the ACT from Coles, Woolworths, Aldi and IGA supermarket chains. The report found that of the 33 types of bacteria isolated from the samples, all except one had some form of resistance to antibiotics. The high level of antimicrobial resistance, multiple drug resistance and the fact that we isolated so many bacteria that were predicted to be pathogenic towards humans is quite alarming. The chicken meat industry shares scientific concerns about antibiotic resistance as a global health concern, but rejects the University of Canberra findings, pointing to its own regular monitoring of the problem. We are always talking about the prudent and judicious use of antibiotics. Our antibiotic usage amongst is, is a global leader in terms of how low we, uh, our usage rates are. The industry says its own studies funded by the federal government show a decrease in antibiotic resistance in chicken meat. Antimicrobial resistance has actually tracked down from the last survey that was undertaken in 2016. So the antimicrobial resistance levels that are being detected is actually lower. The Federal Agriculture Department has questioned the University of Canberra report, telling 730 some of the bacteria tested already had a level of resistance. It is therefore not correct to suggest that all the resistance documented is the result of antibiotic use. The researchers say the government's position is inaccurate and stand by their report. Despite industry and government assurances, infectious diseases expert Professor Peter Collignon says there needs to be more transparency on how antibiotics are used in the food supply chain. Both resistant bacteria and the genes that allow other bacteria to become resistant are there in the food that we buy in supermarkets in Australia. It is still lower than most other areas of the world. And if we want to better control this and keep Australia relatively lower than the rest of the world with superbugs in our food chain, we need more information and we need more activity. Industry and experts agree that effective cooking processes will kill bacteria. Correct food preparation will decrease your risk. Uh, but by the same token, you can, can't stop all cross-contamination. Ethical butcher Laura Dalrymple believes only systemic change can address the problem. 
businesses as consumers can play their part. If we all hold our retailers and the people who are delivering our food to us to account and insist that they provide information about where their food comes from, how it's grown, how it was produced, what kind of systems it came out of and how long was the supply chain that it took to get to us. If we all do that, then I think we will all play a role in, in making a difference.